impact using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on how to make and create more economically and ecologically. If you've been following my YouTube channel for a while, you know I just finished up a series of craft show, my first craft show experience. And if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to that in the comment section below, uh, or excuse me, the description box below. But I figured it was time to get back to some actual crafting. So I've been seeing a lot of those um, reindeer made from corks and twigs on, the, on Pinterest. And I wanted to see how quick and easily I could put one together. So as I mentioned, I don't think this is going to be a terribly difficult project, but uh, hopefully I'm right. I don't know. There might be a few little things I didn't think through when I was figuring out how to put this together. But obviously you need a couple of corks and I'm selecting a few that uh, don't have really beat up ends. Some of them have, you know, really scarred marks where you put the corkscrew in when you open the wine bottle. This one has nice uh, ends on both sides, so this one seems fairly nice as well. So, I have two corks. I have some of my uh, tree branches here. I'm fortunate to have a small tree that has lost all of its leaves, so it's kind of got the perfect size little bits of twig for the legs. And... So the first thing I'm going to do is, now that I've selected the two corks I need, I'm going to cut the legs and the antlers and a little tiny neck for, uh, for the, to make the reindeer. And I've already cut two legs here. I think they're about, I'm using about two inches long. And I have little buds on the ends of the twigs here, which is kind of cute. It makes good little hooves, I think. So I'm just going to cut a couple more legs. You don't want them to be too skinny, that is the thing. Uh, I don't know, this probably will work. They're very spindly little legs, I guess. I'm using my tin snips because they just work pretty well on this. You could probably use anything you have for pruning your trees. And then I want to pick out some little antler shapes. This makes a cute one, I think. How about these two? Uh-oh, gotta go find that one. So now I think I have all of my little twig pieces ready to go here. I have four legs, two little antlers, and my neck. So I want to drill some holes in the cork so that I can get these pieces in there. So I have a center punch here. It just helps to mark the holes before you drill them. So the first hole I want to make is in the body piece uh, for the neck. So I'm going to go back about, I don't know, half an inch maybe, and go ahead and mark that spot. You can see this goes into the cork really easily, and the center punch normally makes a popping sound, but it probably isn't going to do it in this cork because it's so soft. But I don't know if you can see that, but it's already kind of closing up. So before the hole totally disappears, I'm going to get my drill and go ahead and drill the hole in the cork. And you definitely want to take out some of the cork, otherwise you will have it close up again. So just make sure that my neck piece fits in there. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to take my other piece of cork, which is going to be the head, and I'm going to drill about the same distance away on this piece as well. So I'm going to go half inch, quarter inch, what is that? A little more than a quarter inch, I guess. By the way, I don't really recommend drilling on your kitchen table, but that's what I'm doing. All right, so I've got the neck holes drilled. So I guess the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the head piece and I want to drill a couple of holes for the little antler pieces. So I'm going to come in a little bit farther. 
Uh, I don't know, maybe about the same. I'm kind of trying to eyeball how it's going to fit together, but... So I'm coming in about, I don't know, maybe I should measure that and tell you exactly what it is. All right. Let's drill that hole. And then I'll get a ruler. I'm not going all the way through the cork, obviously. So it is almost a half an inch to the center of my hole. Now, you want to make sure that you are drilling, you want to have your neck hole straight down. So it can be a little bit tricky when you're lining everything up, but it doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. So my other little antler hole, I'm going to put about a half an inch away from the edge and a half away, half an inch away from the other edge hole. It's a little tricky to drill the corks, but if you go slowly, it's pretty simple. in here now. So that fits pretty well. And now I'm going to try to drill the four holes for the legs. So again, I want to make sure that I have the neck hole flat as flat down as possible. And I'm going to go, again, about the same as I did for the antlers, but I'm going to make four holes instead of just the two. So I'm going to go almost a half an inch away from the edge, about a half an inch apart. And again on this side. in here and see how he does for standing up. He seems a little wobbly, but he does stand up. So I'm going to go ahead. I might switch. I might get a little bigger twig for this piece because it's pretty thin, but I am going to go ahead and glue this together. I'm not totally sure the best way to glue this together, but I always go to my E6000 glue, which I'm obviously almost out of. And I couldn't find any clear E6000 the last time I was shopping for it, so I got this Gorilla Glue. So far they've kind of functioned pretty much the same. I think actually though the Gorilla Glue was more expensive than the E6000, just, just as a side note. So I think, I don't know how to do this, I guess I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the tip of the twig and try to stick it back in the hole. And actually, this will probably be good just because I might want to have these be a little bit flexible for a little while. I was thinking about trying to use hot glue too, but I think that might be too much glue in a tiny little space. So, Hey, if you're enjoying today's video, please be sure to give it a like. Check the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And be sure to click the bell icon so you're notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you know somebody who would enjoy this content, please share it with them as well. reindeer all glued together and he's pretty cute so far but of course 
the details are what really make or break your craft project. So let's add some little accents and more details. The first thing I want to add are some eyes and I'm pretty sure people were just using these straight pins that have the little balls on the end and I have a lot of them but I don't have very I don't have any black ones so I thought that I was going to paint the black uh, to make the eyes but then I thought about sharpies and that seems to be a much easier way to go so I'm just going to take my Sharpie here and cover up the yellow. And that way you don't have to wait for it to dry. It's a much better idea, I think, than trying to paint them. I'm not sure how well the paint would stick either and cover, so this is just a lot quicker. So now that I have the straight pins the color that I want them. I'm going to go ahead and cut off a fair part of the pin itself. Hopefully it's all dried. All right, so I want to leave a little bit of an edge, probably about a half an inch worth of straight pin. Try not to let this fly across the room. And I'm just using the needle nose pliers to cut part of the straight pin off. And then I'm going to go back and I'm just going to stick these in the cork pretty close to the antlers and a little closer together than the antlers, I think, is maybe going to be the best place for them. Sometimes you never know till you do it. But the good thing is you can move them around if you want to. You could also glue these, but I don't think you need to worry about that with the straight pins. Once they're in there, they're going to be in pretty well. But like I said, if you don't like where they are, you can probably move them. But I think they need to be kind of close together, and I think that's a pretty good spot for them like that. One thing I will say about the legs, uh, they, they are these branches are a little bit green, so I think they might be a little more wobbly than if they were totally dried out. Uh, so they're less brittle, but they are a little bit more slippery and bendy, I guess. And this glue isn't dried all the way but but you want to get the legs in there so they will stand up now one of the other details I think that's really cute is that you kind of turn their heads so they're not looking totally straight forward because I think that adds a little fun dimension so next I'm going to add uh, a nose piece and I just found a cute button that I am going to use I do think I need to drill a hole uh, because the button that I have is uh, solid on the front but it has the what is that the shank is that what it's called I don't know I don't remember uh, on the back so I need to fit that inside the cork so I do need to drill a hole kind of carefully in the nose uh, of my reindeer here if you are going to do this I definitely recommend doing it before you put the whole thing together because it is a little more tricky to do it once you have the pieces glued together <laughs> fun to add a little kind of cotton I think deer have sort of cottony tails I don't know anyway I have a q-tip here and I'm just using my tin snips again to cut the q-tip part off and I'm gonna see how it looks on his tail here I think that'll be cute. I'm just going to glue that on there. These do tend to be top heavy a little bit, so I maybe should have made, I don't know, I think maybe I need to make this back leg a little shorter or something. Because I can get him to stand up, but he's a little wobbly, not going to lie. All right, let's put his tail on and then I might mess with his legs a little bit. Yeah, that 
it seems more stable, so that's good. And the last thing I want to do, or the last detail I want to do, is to make him a little hat. For this step, I'm just using a little piece of uh, cardboard. I think this is this is part of a, pa a toilet paper tube, and I'm going to trim it down a little bit because I think it's a little bit too thick. So I want it about a quarter inch wide. You can use any cardboard though, but the toilet paper tube kind of just curls up on its own, which just makes it a little easier to work with. So I'm just going to make a little loop here that's a little bit bigger than the cork, the diameter of the cork. And I'm just going to secure it with a little bit of hot glue. This is actually another Pinterest thing that I've seen where they make the little hats out of uh, yarn. So I think you're supposed to actually have yarn for this project, but I don't have any yarn, so I'm using crochet thread. So it's going to take me a little bit longer. But I think the gist of it is just that you take a relatively long piece of yarn or string, kind of fold it in half, Put it through your cardboard ring and then put the ends through the loop and then just kind of pull that tight. And you're just going to cut enough pieces to go all the way around to fill the cardboard ring. So that's going to take a little while. So when you're making the yarn hats, the pieces of, uh, what am I using? The crochet thread, yes. I definitely recommend using yarn if you want it to go a little faster, but you want to make sure that you're making everything very uniform. And I'm using uh, about eight inch pieces of the crochet thread. And it's more than you need, but it's a, it's a good length for me to work with, just for my fingers. If you can make yours a little shorter and still loop them through easily, you probably could save a little bit of yarn that way. But I'm just folding them in half, leaving a big loop. And you want to make sure that you're, you're keeping everything uniform. So I'm going, putting the loop inside, threading the rest of my, the ends of my, crochet thread through the loop and then pulling that loop down to the bottom edge of my cardboard ring so that I'm keeping the crochet thread or the yarn if you're using it nice and smooth and tight and uniform around the cardboard ring. cardboard ring completely covered now and this part right here is going to be the bottom edge of the hat so if you push all of your strings through and then you can tie take another piece of your yarn or your string and tie off the cap and trim off the edges and you'll get a hat that's like more like this now I think yarn might have laid down into a little better sort of pom-pom shape at the top. And then I just stuck a little bit of paper towel inside the hat to kind of hold the shape out. But I'm gonna to try to make a slightly different style hat with this blue version. So let me stuff everything back to the other side. And then I'm just gonna kind of twist the cap like this and push it through. So this is going to be the top of my hat here, and I think that's kind of a cute little shape. Push it through just a little bit more maybe. It's a little bit tangled here. If you might you want to smooth it out a little bit more, you could start over and see if you can redo it. But uh, I don't know, I think that's pretty, pretty cute little shape, kind of like the, the way it is. So I'm just going to carefully trim off the rest of this string and then probably put some hot glue in there to kind of help it hold the shape and then I'll have 
sort of a little cap hat and my little pom-pom hat. So here's my little cork reindeer once he's got his hat on. I guess this may be she, I don't know. I kind of made a little family, but um, I really think these are about the cutest cork reindeer that I've seen. I've seen some made out of solid corks, but I like these. I think these are just a lot cuter of a style, and you don't have to cut the corks, which is nice. So I might make a couple more. I don't know, there's some other cute ideas. You could make scarves for them put a little bell around their neck. I don't know. Uh, it just seems like there's a lot of cute ways you could decorate these pork reindeer. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back here soon in the lab.